Hey guys, Robert Ham here with RobertHamPhotography.com. Catch me over on Twitter at RobHamPhoto. You can even find me on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash RobertHamPhotography. Hey, today we're going to be going over how to edit great photos on the Surface Pro 3. Even when you're using a RAW photo, and I would suggest you use a RAW photo, uh, we're going to talk about how you bring that into the Surface and turn it into something beautiful, kind of like these two back here. So if you're ready to get with it, stick around. All right, as you can see right now, we've got a nice image up, and we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at that. This is an image that really attracts me, mainly because of its composition. So if you consider your rule of thirds, you've got a little line going across there, you've got a little line coming across here, and then you have one coming straight down, and then you've got another one coming straight down. Their head is actually on the diagonal point of the inner square, which I like that. And it might be slightly off-center, just a little bit, but that also brings some liveliness to the scene because it kind of puts them askew from the scene. We also have these nice trailing lines that go through. These are leading lines that point all the way back right here to the top of his head, as you can see, because these are pylons. They're standing underneath a pier. And because there's depth, a nice lens, and good compression in the image, we've got a very well-defined subject separated nicely from the, foreground, uh, from the background. And that's something that I like about this image a lot. Here's a couple of things, caveats to consider when we're looking at this. Of course, number one, his face is dark. This guy's got a little bit of a tan going on. He's, he actually was really red that day from a suntan. So because he's red, you can kind of see it here. Um, it's going to make the luminescence that happens with his head when it's shining right here from a little bit of sweat. It's going to turn into like a magenta blue and uh, into the white color right there and so that's going to give us just a little bit of cause for pause when we're trying to edit the photo if we're not careful the uh, border area between the white and the purplish color of his skin tone could turn into kind of a muddy color also over here you'll see that she kind of looks orange she's not orange <laughs> okay uh, so she looks orange because uh uh, maybe on your screen here she looks uh, a little bit more brownish than orange the nice part about using a surface pro 3 which is the device that I'm on is that it is calibrated to be 95% Adobe RGB which this is excellent I'm also using a very high def screen 216 pixels per inch 2160 by 1440 which is uh, a real nice screen and I'm using of course uh, Lightroom this is CC 2015 and uh, you know I like it a lot so let's get started. The second thing that we're going to concern ourselves with is a little bit of the color, you know. Moreover, we're going to concern ourselves with our highlights and lowlights. So the first thing I do to anything uh, photo when I bring it in is I allow uh, Lightroom to do an auto tone. I don't like it to mess with my color balance. I like to do that myself. But I don't mind having a raw image that comes in and then have Lightroom uh, apply some kind of auto tone to it. If we ever wanted to get it back, we could just as easily come over here and we could go to revert or reset image, uh, and that would be fine. But when I bring it in, it, this gives me a nice baseline because I can now just bring my highlights all the way down. And when you do, we'll see that we've got this horizon beginning to appear right there, and I can move my shadows all the way up. And when you do, we see that we've actually got quite a bit of nice tone and detail right there. Now, I may not keep the shadows there for the entire time, but they're there for now, and that's fine. We're also going to come right over here and look at uh, my white slider and see if we can bring out a little bit more of the background by moving it all the way down. There we go. Now, that kind of puts a little bit of a, a cast over the entire image. It almost makes it look fuzzy and let me tell you something about raw images. Raw images are entire images. Let's make this picture even bigger. Are entire images uh, and they are raw because they have no processing done to them. We're actually developing the image now. So the reason they look different than a complete file, and this may sound counterintuitive, you might think, oh, they should look like whatever you take a picture of. No, no, they shouldn't. Because the raw file, this image right here, before we started messing with it, was showing as much dynamic range as possible. It had all of the information. Uh, this is a 32 megabyte file, and it had all the information that those 32 megabytes could handle. When we begin to develop it, we then put a priority on certain parts of the information, thereby limiting its effect on the photo. So we're developing the image from the raw file. So it's like really chiseling away at a block of marble. 
So the raw file has all the image inside of it, and then we have to chip away enough of the image in order to see what it is that uh, we're trying to see. Part of my process for doing that is coming over here to now work my camera calibration. And it's currently in Adobe Standard. Now I shot this on a Fuji X-T1. Fuji and Adobe have worked together. And so I was using the Velvia profile because it was outdoors. And Velvia, you know, Fuji was making film for 80-something years. Velvia was one of the types of films they developed. And I really like the Velvia, the... the uh, trippy kind of colors of the saturated blues and reds and the contrast curve so it's really nice you could of course choose astia or sepia uh you could also choose uh, like a classic chrome which is trying to mimic kodachrome uh, but i'm going to come back over here to uh, velvia now on your screen what you're watching depending on how it's calibrated I'm, I'm recording this on a samsung galaxy s6 edge so it looks a little contrasty because of my super amoled screen on the actual phone if you're watching this on a properly calibrated uh screen or something uh you know like an iphone maybe you're going to see the colors differently she does not look yellow here she just looks kind of normal you may be seeing her as a little bit more yellow than i am so we're gonna uh, we're gonna adjust that we want to do this fix next. We want to apply this before we start making any changes to color and white balance because if we did our color and corrected our color first and then adjusted, it would be as much of a change as this is a change right here uh, or as uh, this is a change. It would be a really big uh, change. I mean, you may not be able to see it, but definitely I can like that is. Okay, so we're going to come back over here to Velvia. I already know that the yellows in her tan are too much okay so we need to bring those yellows down okay and we're just adjusting the hue right now okay oops looks like internet explorer is doing something i don't want it to do let's come right back okay so here we're just going to adjust these colors out we got so much saturation we'll bring the reds up a little bit that's nice okay we're also going to come over here and get this luminance up to come up a little bit. Not too much. We're going to bring our saturation down just a little bit. Okay. We're going to mess with our greens. Bring these greens right here. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I like the blue kind of coming in on the sides. And we're going to come over here and bring our contrast up a little bit. We'll take her down. Bring the sliders down. Now, there's a little bit going on right here. Let's actually come over here and begin to put some noise reduction into this image. I usually use about 20. Um, so we're around 23. I don't make too much of a fuss over it. And I like to have a little bit of a vignette that brings things in. Okay, bring some focus down right there. Okay, now we're actually looking really pretty, but we want to bring a little bit of this vibrancy down. And our saturation, saturation can be really obnoxious. So we bring our saturation down some more. Bring our vibrancy up to here. Bring our greens down just a little bit. Okay, bring. Now, the last thing that we're doing right now is trying to figure what we're going to do in this particular spot right here and up here. So we're going to get our brush. We're going to bring our brush and we're going to go to our saturation. And I hate looking at lists because my eyes don't want to do. And we're just going to turn on our show selecting selection mask. And we're actually now going to paint. And we're just going to paint around here. Now it looks really nice. Okay. And I've got something going on in the background that started while I started the video. So it's causing me to lag a little bit. Don't know why. Probably an update or something that I wasn't aware of. But no worries. Okay, so we've painted them. We're going to go ahead and turn it off right now. We don't need to worry too much about um, whether or not uh, we get any overspray or not. But we're just going to come over here. And now that we've got our saturation, we're going to bring the saturation down just a little bit. And now, there we go. Now you can kind of see that we're fixing some of our saturation issue that we have had. And for instance, we're here. We can actually go ahead and bring our contrast up a little bit. Actually, we're going to pull that down. And we're going to bring our white balance down a little bit. I think that's good. 
we can even mess with our tint here. And you see when you're using the tint, you can turn them green or whatever. So we want to be right around. Right around there. Now, if we move our highlight slider, we can actually bring out a little bit more of his face. Bring our shadows up and down. Good. Take our whites, pull those back some. And the blacks. We can work our clarity, but I don't want to do that too much. Just pull that down a little bit. Good. Good. I like that. We're going to go ahead and turn that off real quick. And then, uh, I guess, if I was going to work the image just a little bit more, I might add a little bit of clarity to the whole thing just to kind of bring it out some. Nice, right there. And I'd probably bring saturation, my hue down a little bit. Just a little bit as a whole. And bring the saturation of my reds down just a little bit. There we go. Bring the saturation of my orange down just a little bit. Greens can come out some. I like greens. You can actually mess around with wherever you like the greens. Well, actually, I like that a lot. Good. Now we got it. We bring our blues up. Okay, we're gonna bring our blues out, up. So we're gonna bring our blues up. We're gonna bring our purple down. But bringing our purple down, that gets his shirt tone to go back to normal. And then the magenta. Watch when we adjust that. There's only a couple little areas. Look at his face, and you can kind of see those areas as they pop up or go away. And I think I'm gonna do one other thing right here. I'm gonna soften. I'm gonna use some skin softening. Got a defined brush for skin softening. And I just want to soften this area just a little bit. Bingo, just like that. I like hers too. Bingo, just like that. Good, soften that up real nice. And if you want to see where you softened, of course, you could just as easily turn that on. Okay, and of course, this was a new brush as well. So this is looking nice right there. Let's go ahead and close that down. And, you know... If we wanted to, we could come down here under the profiles, and here's where we can also affect the tone and the color of the image, right? So we, uh, I think we're right about there. I like that. And we can give it a little bit extra pull back just a little bit. Now, these are actually affecting your shadows, your tint for your red, green, and blue primary shadow color. And they're pretty cool because they, see, if you notice, I can see the horizon that shadow coming back out, and we can really plus them up and make them real contrasty or, or whatnot. I kind of like that right there. Pull our blues out. Let's see. Ooh, blue. There's there's the purple of the shadows coming out right there. And there's his shirt. And then the last is right there. <sighs> we can really make it some good. That's like a color processing. But I'm going to pull the blues down just a little bit to about right about there. So as you can see, we've made this entire image right here. We're ready to go. The You know, if I was if I was working this some more, I might want to bring my po my vignette through a little differently just to kind of give this some border, right? And feather it nicely. And then might even come up here and bring my shadows down just a little bit. Bingo. So we really got some, a little bit more depth. You can bring your whites back through it, but I don't want to do that. Bring your highlights up just a little bit. And uh, contrast. Contrast is up, clarity is up, and there we go. To be true, in the end, you could just come right over here, print the image, you know. So printing it's pretty simple. We would just come over here, set up our page. I choose to set up for, um, I guess this one's fine. Set up size uh, A4, okay. And then we'd come over here and tell it one space, and we're going to do all the way. There you go. And, of course, you know, if you don't want a border, you can tell it no border. Okay, so as you can see, we just got through editing that photo. It didn't take too long. We really went through it in about 10, 12 minutes. The reality is, once you get uh, quick with Lightroom, and, and what we did here on the Surface Pro 3 would work on any computer that's running Lightroom, but once you get quick with Lightroom, you're able to very easily maneuver around it. And I think editing a photo for me takes a couple of minutes per photo uh, for basic edits. And this, what we were doing here, would be considered a, a very basic edit. Just uh, adjusting color and contrast, kind of bringing out the image and, and making sure that your focus was looking good. I hope that you had a good time. I mean, I had a great time. And I'd like to hear your comments below. Tell me what you think about using the Surface. Is it, is in, is it in your workflow? Uh, is it something that you're looking at adding? Also, do you use Lightroom? How about Aperture? Maybe Painter? I don't know. So if you've got any tips and tricks of your own, don't forget to leave them in the comments down below. Once again, I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side.